I'm heading now for a beach near Hastings. Bulverhive was where an 18th century sailing ship called the Amsterdam was wrecked on the 26th of January, 1749. Owned by the Dutch East India Company, the world's first multinational, this brand new ship was a state-of-the-art trading vessel bound for Indonesia. I'm meeting up with Dutch archaeologist Jerzy Gowronski and archaeologist and historian Peter Marsden. Peter, you said this is the best preserved East Indiaman, but all I can see is a, it's a few bits of wood sticking out. Like it looks like it's the, the, the edge. Is it the yes. edge, the top of it? You have to go down over to, between 20 and 30 feet to, to find the, the bottom. It's deeper at the stern. Um, so it's buried, it's just an outline here. What you in fact see is two different levels of the ship. On, the, on this side, yeah. that's the level of the upper gun deck. Right. But here on this side, you see the last bits of the lower gun deck. So, so it's tilted? The yeah, the ship is still uh, tilted. Oh, tilted that tilted. way, that's it. It's the and you bow. can, see, you can yeah. see it pointing that way, right? Yeah, okay, and so the, bow, the bow is higher than the stern yeah. because the stern is indicated there with a the pin sticking out. Okay. So that's the limit of the stern area. How did the ship get here? And well, what's the story behind it landing here in the first well, place? Well, it was a very unfortunate... It was a maiden voyage, built in Amsterdam in 1748, and it was uh, left, left the north of Holland, but waiting for two months. It, it was in winter with fierce southwesterly gales. She was in this storm, uh, a terrible storm here, lost her rudder off Beachy Head, and uh, Captain Clump just had to beach the ship. A lot of people were dying on board from fever. Without a, without a rudder as well. Without yeah. a rudder. The ship went adrift, went up, and then got stuck. And the ship, in three months' time, sank Bang away seven into meters deep lamp. And, and came to rest on the bedrock. All the provisions, the personal belongings, everything shifted to the side. And it's like a pie <laughs> waiting there to be excavated and tell us about the past. Although the ship's cargo and all the belongings of the crew and passengers had been buried seven or eight metres down in the hole, Jersey did have a brief chance to carry out some very limited excavations in the 1980s. Underneath that sand, only after a metre, you find organic material like seeds and pollen and pieces of textile, and it gives you a very broad picture of, of the material culture. And this bottle is, is an archaeological object and comes from the ship. Yeah, this is a red, <laughs> and we think probably Bergerac. Now, you can smell it. Well, it's go been on them. fortified, 21% right. proof, 21% right. proof to preserve it for the long journey. But there, a smell from two, over 250 years ago. Wow! Did, I was expecting it. I was not expecting it to still smell like wine. That's incredible. This ship is a time capsule. It really uh, is. It's a yeah. microcosmos of society. This ship deserves to be better treated than sitting here in the beach because it's, it's, it's a mine of information. There were over 300 people on board at the time of the shipwreck. All but the 50 who had already died of fever safely disembarked. I'm left wondering what this incredible ship looked like. What other precious cargo was in its hold? and what happened to it before it sank into the beach. <laughs>